Hello everybody and welcome back. Tonight's video is a continuation of the e-buggy build series. The last video was turnbuckles, the dreaded turnbuckles that got that over with. So tonight I have in store for you bag D, bag E, and the arms. We're going to prep the front and rear arms. The bag D is the chassis plate with the mud guards and then bag E is the mounting of the center diff and it stands and everything. So then I'm doing the arms because I'm using the hard arms instead of the soft arms that come with the kit because it's starting to warm up now. It's time to run the hard arms. So I have one more thing to announce. I have a special guest with me in the studio slash trailer. Everybody welcome the pit chicks join me. She's hanging out with my nitro buggy and my wheeler over there. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to get this camera turned around to a POV view. And by the way, she, you know, she's here and she always had some witty remarks and she'll probably make me laugh every now and then, which makes me mad. So <laughs> it might be entertaining. So I'm going to get this camera turned around to a POV view and we'll get started. Okay, so here we go. Tonight, we're going to get out... Uh, bag D, the infamous, otherwise known as the infamous D bag, and bag E, and you see my lovely assistant over there, I think, maybe, say hey, maybe not. okay, so tonight, I have a new unboxing knife, this is a Presto Switchblade, it's an older knife, um, really cool, I'm not sure how old it is, but it's pretty old, Switchblade, a lot of people watching this don't even know the stories behind switchblades back in the day when they were outlawed. Um, anyway, there's the D-bag. Gonna get these side guards out. And, then, and this one's sharp, unlike a couple of other ones I've had lately. This. I was messing around with it earlier about cutting myself. Gonna get our screws out. And for this, we're gonna need some Loctite. Well, these screws are going in the metal. You wanna Loctite them for sure. And it comes with the, uh, the pad and the battery stay. I'll probably, I may save that for later. We'll see, see how it goes. So I'll get some blue Loctite and shake it up. I'll take and put a little bit on the table. Oh, that one hadn't even opened yet. Let's get this one. This one's about empty. This is the gel Loctite. I kind of like it. Doesn't take much for these things. Uh, they're tiny little screws, so that's probably way more than I need. What can you do? Okay, so this is a pretty simple process. You're just screwing the mud guards in. Actually, Maybe it's not so simple, I gotta turn around backwards. Okay, so. Probably use a, not necessarily use, a, I do like to do these by hand because they're so tiny they're easy to strip out. And Lisa's dinging over there. She's getting text in the trailer, which is kind of strange because. No, it wasn't she got something because we usually don't, we usually don't get much of nothing out here because our backyard is no reception. That's where I got my trailer at home right now. Now these have a little step. I like. I don't like to screw them down all the way because this, this thing can move a little bit. You see the screw has a little bitty step in it. So it seats the mud guard better. Oh, she's reminding me today. She ran some snakes saw a snake, a huge snake, in the yard. I think it's a black racer. So she was trying to keep it from getting over here in the trailer. Cause last thing we do is be working on a video. Actually, it'd probably be pretty entertaining get some views. But if a snake come crawling out at me, I so. <laughs> so she ran the snake off and I made a video on the shorts So continue to do this. Sorry, this is kind of boring The 
The next part in the bag E is the standoffs for the center diff. There's a spacer that goes under the diff too. And I, I'm stopping on, you know, bag F is, you know, pretty much the front end. And the next step after this one would be the front arms and then prepping the diffs and diff cases. The, the diff cases alone is going to be one long video because I do it different than the, the book. I did a video on it before, but I want to show you again. I want to make sure that's, that's a standalone video. Just I do I shim the diffs different uh, on the e-buggy. It works out a lot better. I've been doing that for years. And that was one of my first videos. Okay, so you get all these screws in there. Get them all tight and they'll pretty much be there forever. You may take them off to clean it if you want to. Get one of the super duper cleanup jobs. Too much Loctite there. Okay, so bag E is next. Gotta go ahead and get our screws out. Okay, so these are your diff standoffs. Uh, you've got the recessed area where the bearing goes, so they're going to pretty much sit right here, like this. Um, these carbon spacers go in between there. I'm going to start these by hand, then run them in with a drill. Get them started and then uh, get my drill. Now, I don't know if I've showed you this drill, screwdriver, what do you want to call it before, but it's the coolest thing I get from the pit chick. You pull the trigger and it doesn't really move, but you rotate it and then it moves. It's got a gyro in it. When I first saw this, I saw it was one of the coolest things. David Sawyer had one. I played with it forever and I had to go get one. So I admit we immediately ordered one, if I'm not mistaken, or I got it for Christmas or something. You can set the clutch and use that. I don't do that. I kind of run it down really close and then make sure you kind of do it by feel. What? Oh yeah. Yeah. You can flip around that way and do it, do it like this too. This is one of the coolest tools I've ever had. I love it. Uh oh, the, the pit chick is leaving us. She she has no Wi-Fi signal and don't want no part of that. So see you later. Y'all say goodbye to the pit chick. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and finish torquing them down by hand. Just get them good and snug. A lot of times I'll go ahead and run it down with a drill. You get a feel for it. But when I'm trying to video here, it's kind of hard to focus on that and not screw up. So being a little more cautious than I would normally be. And a lot of times I will set the clutch. That that works too. Um, then you can come back and torque it. I, I may eventually do that. Okay, so then we got our center diff built. We're gonna go ahead and, man, it feels nice. And uh, you go ahead and set it down in there. It snaps right into place, nice and free. Um, then we put our top pieces of the stay on it. And these are the same as the nitro buggy. You can see where you screw in the brakes and everything. 
And Exotech makes some aluminum ones. I haven't tried those yet. I don't know that I'll ever need to. I, the plastic one's been fine. Um, if I'm honest, I haven't invested a whole lot of money in the e-buggy a whole lot of time. That looks a little crooked. Let me see what's going on here. Maybe I over torqued them. I did. I think I put a little too much ump on one of the screws. Okay, so just snap those in place. The next we get these are these go for the uh, the chassis braces hooked to these. They go like so, and then um, the top plate goes next. So what what I'll do is go ahead and feed the screws through, put the brace in there. So I gotta change back to a 1.5 millimeter and this one I will use it in this direction let's go ahead and set the clutch and see see how it does so y'all can see that next I'll put it on 10 just to see what happens yep perfect Okay, so I, then I can come back. That was pretty light torque, so I come back and just give it a little more twist where it feels just right. So that's pretty much it for bag D and E. We got our center diff mounting starting to look like something. Um, now this other piece, actually, I can go ahead and do this. I'm not going to do the foam pad yet because I'm doing shorty packs and I need to get that set up with my batteries. So I'll go ahead and put this piece on because it only goes pretty much in one place. Well, I'll set it towards the back because I use my shorty packs in the back location. So switch back to two millimeter. Switch back to, to a pistol grip. For now, I'm gonna set it right here. Kind of in the middle. I use the ultimate shorty packs uh, I have to wire them in series, but I found Oh, we need a little more on the clutch So I found that I moved when I went to switch the shorty packs I found I moved the batteries back and forth tried it every position I found out it seems to have a better balance, more easier to drive, still handles great in the back position. So I always do it in the back. So then once I get my batteries located, we'll have to trim this to fit the shorty pack. I'll worry about that. That'll be one of the last things I do. So I'll just set it aside for now. So there you have it. There's your bag D and E. I'm gonna get ready and I'm gonna get my arms out and show you how to do that. And I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are back. Um, this is arm prep. Uh, I like in the summertime or in the warmer weather when it's not freezing cold, I like using the hard arms. The hard arms are indicated with a white dot. That's how you know you got the right ones. I keep both on hand so I'll have them ready. Winter time, I run the regular soft arms that come with the kit. Now the rears, I do use the carbon inserts. The fronts, I don't. I glue the fronts in. So 
let's get started on how we do this. So we got to get our screws open. We've got droop screw, a droop screw. Actually, I may have too many of these out. Um, got a droop screw. We'll do that first. Go ahead and pop that guy out. Droop screw, droop screw is going to grow in from the bottom. So I like to take, just like the other plastic parts, take my boring tool and shant for me a starting spot. Go ahead and do that on all of them. It just makes it, put it in straight a little easier, in my opinion. Okay, uh, the only other thing I do prep wise on the arms at least until I get to the point of installing them is you, you need to notch a little area right here for the for clearance on the universals um, so I'll take it from this point on it's right here to right here just a little rounded spot just extra clearance when you've got the hubs in a down position it'll tend to rub and that just gives you a little clearance so I go right up to the edge do it before I put the arm the inserts in pretty simple I'll show that too Okay, so go ahead and get your two and a half millimeter and start your droop screw from the bottom. And the droop is going to be set later after the car is complete. So I'll go ahead and run them all the way in, trying to run them as straight as possible. Go ahead and bottom them out, and then we'll adjust the droop later on, way later on. Now normally these rear arms would be later on when you're doing the rear end. I don't know if it's an R bag or what. I know the front's an F bag. Been a while since I looked at that. But um, anyway, we're almost done here. Now the only other thing that I'll do is you know I make sure that the hinge pins go through smooth. Make sure there's no nothing there and a lot of times they'll be a little tight up against the C and D plate or the A and B plate right here and I take a little material off of the Dremel so I wait to the end if anything I'll take a little off at angle this way and this way so it's more of a point so there's less friction you want those things to be free and sometimes when you put a new kit together or new arms they won't be uh, so I'll it will end up taking some material out of there almost almost on every time so Okay, the next thing I do, the front arms get glued. So I like to use my Loctite super glue with an one-up racing glue tips. I love these glue tips for pretty much anything, especially tires. Um, I keep those on hand all the time. It looks like I'm about to need some more. So this is pretty simple. Just a tiny little coat everywhere that if you can get it to come out okay just a tiny little coat everywhere it's going to touch you put too much you're going to be just cleaning it up so doesn't take much remember you're going to be wiping this up so the more you put up put on it the more you're going to be wiping it doesn't take much to hold it down this just stiffens it up a little but not as stiff as the carbon. The carbon pieces on the front tend to tend to break easier, so I never use those. Never have even bought any and tried it, to be honest with you. I just know that's what the pros were doing at the time, and I tried it, and it worked great, so I said, well, I'm not gonna waste the money on that. If nobody runs them, I don't know. A lot of times lately, you've been seeing people run the plastic in the rear, maybe gluing them in. I never glue the carbon one in because I like to reuse them. You can reuse them several times. So we're going to drop this guy on here. 
Go ahead and run our screws in and, the, and then we'll wipe it off and then we'll get on to the next one. Just barely snug, it doesn't take much. Now if you run these hard arms in the winter, you're gonna snap one every now and then. They just get so brittle in the cold. And then the same thing goes for the soft ones, get a little too much flex in the summer. They get a little too soft. So there's a reason, there's a, a call for running both. A lot of times, and before they started putting that white dot in there, and sometimes I still do it. I haven't done that lately. Get my towel over here. And wipe off any excess glue you got. I would go in here and take the Dremel and write hard or soft right there. But since they're doing that, they start doing that white dot, I quit doing that. So. You see, I didn't have to wipe hardly any off because it went pretty light with it. Love these glue tips. So precise. I see people with their their um, arm inserts coming up, coming off, and coming bent up and everything, and they're freaking out and everything. What usually that doesn't happen. That happens eventually, but by the time it does, it's so worn out. You need to replace them anyway. So I probably don't change them often as I should. A lot of times, especially the e buggy, I just use it for track time. And I get out there and run it way more than I should. I don't do as much maintenance as I probably should or near as much as I do on the nitro car. Uh, so. But I change them somewhat regular. I, every time I place an order, I usually put some arms on. I've got a drawer full of them at the moment. They'll, I got enough to last me the rest of the year. I like to keep it that way. So I stock up at the end of the year. When they have their Black Friday sale, I usually stock up pretty good. It lasts me almost all year. I have small orders in between here and there. But for the most part, I get all my stuff at the end of the year. Okay, just going to make my final torque on those. Off any excess glue. Okay, there's the front arms. They're done and ready to go. I'm starting to get a stockpile of parts over here. I got my shocks done. I take the, I like to take the springs and the the cups out of it. Let them sit in the little stands there so they sit straight while I'm waiting on them. Okay, so pretty sure we're through with the glue tip and the glue. Okay, so the rear arms, I'll keep these plastic ones. I probably got a ton of those. I don't, I'll, I'll never use them. Um, so get my Dremel with the sanding wheel. Really all I do is hit a spot right, right here, little, just round it right there, and that'll give you plenty of clearance. So here we go.
that's pretty much all it takes to clean off any burrs. You know, look at it once you get through assembling it. If you see it needs a little more trimming, you can do it then. So now I'll go ahead and snap my carbon pieces in. Run these screws down, and then we'll get the other one done. I'm just reusing these carbon pieces from uh, last build. You can use these over several times, you know, until they get chipped up or broke. Unbelievable how long they last the environment they're in. You may have a screw come go wacky every now and then or break a corner out or something, but generally they last a long time. Okay, so let's go ahead and knock this other one out. put my carbon pieces in sometimes they fit a little tighter than others there's several people make these uh, J&T has them uh, HB has them of course that's, these are HB that's the only ones I've ever bought with HB uh, there's several people making them now but I tend to stick with HB ones again I'll probably these I've got these in another set and of course what's in the nitro buggy look at her over there She's ready to go uh, anyways uh, I'll probably buy another set or two the end of this year with my big order Let's see what's going on another thing I'm reusing from old car is the 20 degree hubs I've got a set of those uh, actually they're a spare set that's what I'll be using in this setup just like always, so. Okay, there you have it. Okay, there we go. That was bag D and E, which is the start of the chassis with the center diff. Got that all wrapped up. And we got our front and rear arms done. So, the next video is probably going to be on the rear diff install into the diff housings. I'm going to break that up into one video for diff housing and diff shimming. It's kind of extensive and a little bit different the way I do it, so I want to make sure I'm very thorough and want that to be a separate video so I can reference it back later. So I hope you're enjoying the series. Uh, we keep going. We're going to get a, a complete car built. Once I get done with it, we're going to get it on the track i'm gonna show you how i get it set up and everything uh, i've got new electronics going in it and it's going to be a fun time so i'm going to keep this series going until i get the car completely built and dial it in and let y'all see it run and everything so um stay tuned make sure you like the channel like the channel subscribe hit the notification bell for further notifications so you can stay in tune and I, remember i've got this on a playlist so you can watch it from front to back uh, hopefully uh, that'll be something we can reference down the road and um, have a good time. So thanks for watching.